this is gonna be a rough one. Before I get into roasting dark matter and everything I did not like about this book, I wanna quickly go over two key things. The first of which is I'm just an internet idiot. My entire branding is I am a disheveled goblin. I have no qualifications outside of being a big sci-fi fantasy fan. If you subscribe to this channel, assuming I'm some like highly trained doctoral thesis English major, no. I'm just a fucking nerd and the whole point of this channel is to try and come across like your friend down the hall who shares a love of interest of sci-fi fantasy with you and wants to chat about it. I am in no way, shape, or form claiming to be an authoritative voice in science fiction and fantasy and if this very popular book is one that you love, I'm jealous of you. I am always jealous of people who end up liking a book I dislike because I had to spend time reading it. Second key point, this is the two, look at it, little bunny ears there. I think there are many admirable qualities to Dark Matter. I think the author, Blake Crouch, f nailed it. As an extraordinary authorial voice, he comes across certainly through the pages without being too heavy handed. I get why he has a fan base, for sure. So before I get into a deep dive into everything that drove me absolutely crazy following the main character, Jason Dessen, because he is the dumbest man in the multiverse, the polar opposite of Rick from Rick and Morty. <laughs> there was a point in this book where I actually just started picturing Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie, because I think Jason Dessen has decision-making skills on a similar level. So I'm just gonna leave this gif running. And I think it's going to be funnier and funnier to just have this playing <laughs> as the review goes on. And the initial concept of Dark Matter is fascinating. It's not highly original, but it's set up and executed in the first two thirds of the book quite well. In my first notes on Dark Matter, I stand by despite now after finishing it, not really liking it, and that Dark Matter feels like a very good episode of The Twilight Zone at first. It's setting up a sci-fi premise you've seen before most likely, but grounding it really well and connecting high concept stuff right on down to the personal level for a compelling story. And if that invested you from beginning to end in Dark Matter, I, again, I'm jealous. I think you had a better time than me and that sucks for me. And I wanna make crystal clear Lack of originality is not a criticism I have for Dark Matter. I am of a personal opinion that books don't need to be hyper original. As long as you're doing what we know well, great. You can be a talented storyteller and go on a typical hero's journey, deliver it in a package, and we're gonna be like, yay! Because, you know, but there's only so many stories that can be told. And I wanna give Dark Matter credit for touching on fears for the personal internal conflict of our main character, Jason Dessen, in a way that is hyper relatable. There are so many questions about individual choice and regret permeating Dark Matter. Uh, and that's probably why I ended up not DNFing the book. I wanted to see what Dark Matter had to say about all this at the end of the book. Even the overall tone, I think, is a good match for Apple TV+. Plus. I hope they change this book in adaptation and improve it a little bit in my own personal preference and opinion, especially the very ending. Uh, but this is a good selection for this specific streaming service. You know how some of them just like have a tone where you're like, Netflix, Stranger Things, makes sense. For something there about their overall branding, like that adds up. Because of things like Severance and Silo, I think the overall style of Apple TV+, Plus will lend itself to adapting Dark Matter well. Unfortunately for me though, Dark Matter is then completely and utterly ruined by some of the most intolerable character writing I have come across in recent memory. I'm usually okay following idiots in narratives. Hey, I'm a big fan of Fitz. I think he's a great idiot and the author knows he's an idiot. This scientist ends up making the dumbest decisions possible time after time and not in a way that's excusable. He is a scientist and these aren't like adrenaline filled moments where he makes poor choices. There's like calculated thought out reasoned, oh, I'm gonna go do this moments where I'm like, oh, do you wanna and die and get more people killed? It seems like it. Here's gonna become the most controversial part of the review. I'm going to uh, full on spoil 
Dark Matter. I think this is bad enough that I am not recommending reading it, and I, to get my full coherent opinion clearly across of why this book does not work for me, need to get into plot specifics, so we're spoiling Dark Matter. It's a don't read it out of 10 for me. Let's explain the story. Hitch a ride. So the base premise from the beginning here is we are following a Walter White type character who is extremely smart, but instead of spending their life devoted to their career, ended up devoting their life to the woman they love and family. And I enjoy that uh, concept for a character, especially when the antagonist who's introduced, surprise, is a Jason Desson, Jason Desson 2, from another universe who did devote his life to just his career, but regrets it and wants to steal this Jason's life. Cool. And I will even say Dark Matter does a good job at first of setting up these two as polar opposites of each other and having a conflict of self that I feel is admirably executed. I, I really like the dynamic between these two. Now, how our Jason's life is stolen is not only does Jason 2 come in and steal his life, but he then sends Jason back to his universe to replace him. Why does he do that? Instead of just killing Jason? Because I don't know. <laughs> Because we see later on that this Jason too is willing to kill and he works with people who are willing to kill. I guess he just wanted to send a different Jason back to his universe to f with the people in his universe because it sure does. Methodical, well thought out scientist just like setting up loose ends for himself because you know, sure. But that's not like a big enough problem, right? That's one of the things you can easily just wipe away and be like, hey, the conflict needs to happen. So we're just don't think about that. And if the book was better written, I wouldn't even be mentioning it. But this is a small seed to a full ass tree. Let's get into the tree. So our Jason wakes up in the other universe and things do not go well for him. We get continual flashbacks to Jason 2 in our universe and D Jason's wife, Danny, is like noticing changes. Like there's a part of her brain that's like, you're not my husband, but she'd be insane to vocalize that, so she doesn't. And even Jason's son, it, it, he's not really an important character very much, but he's at one point like, you're not my dad. You know, Jim, you're not my dad. So there is a difference between the Jasons that like people can pick up on. But cutting back to our Jason in the other universe, he wakes up and, you know, he's like, hey, I need to go get back to my wife. But strangely, he's in a high tech compound that clearly was built with like billions of dollars. And they're being interviewed like, Jason, oh my God, you finally made your invention work. You are able to travel the multiverse, fill us in. And because of the drugs he was injected with for the box that he was sent into this other universe to work with, uh, he, he can't remember like what exactly happened to him. He's got amnesia. So he's just, I don't know what's happening. And eventually he escapes from the compound uh, and just goes and runs out in the world. And I'm still in at this point in the book, by the way. I think it's handling everything up to this point quite well because Jason makes very good grounded decisions where at first he's like, I need to go to a hospital. I need to figure out what is wrong with me. I might be insane. And they start telling him like, you don't work at the university you work at. Uh, also, you're not married to the woman you say you're married to. And he's like, <laughs> they try to commit him, but he's like, nah, and bounces. And eventually tracks down his wife in this universe, Danny, having an art gallery. And she's like, whoa, I thought you went missing. What's going on with you? And he's like, oh, I don't know, but like I inspired this art exhibit from you. Also, you're dating my friend who has a crush on you back in our universe. This is all wrong. But at this point, Jason's picked up that he might be insane. His, his like wedding band's missing, but the indent from it is there. So he ties a string around it. Really good little details like that that help reassure him like this is the other universe. And I'm still 100% at this point in the story. He goes back with this uh, version of his wife to their home and like, okay, great scene happens where they smoke some weed together and he just can't handle keeping it all in anymore. So he just, he spills out to Danny and the guy she's kind of seeing who's still there which is weird, but like a good scene. What's happening to him? Uh, he first does it as a hypothetical, but then like actually just like says like, no, this is happening to me right now and I need help. He knows at this point, this universe's version of his friend is involved with whatever happened to him. That is explicitly stated. And yet he still blows his cover in front of this version of his friend. Cause I guess, he trusts him, but he clearly shouldn't because his friend 
is not trustworthy in this universe and says some weird, aggressive, sketchy stuff. So to add that into the series of stupid decisions by Jason, it's one that like at this point I was able to forgive because I was like, OK, whatever. But compounded with every other dumb decision that's about to happen, dude. And the guy who his wife is sleeping with just decides to leave this potentially insane man alone with the girl that he's starting to date. But she's like, no, leave. It's fine. And he's like, all right, I respect you. The book doesn't respect her, but he does. And so Jason ends up having sex with this notably hotter version of his wife. <laughs> Good for him. Time goes by and at 2 a.m. someone's banging on the door like, we need to talk to you. And so Danny goes and opens the door. It's a hitman from the compound. Boom, shoots at this version of his wife in the head, takes Jason back to the compound. And they are like, something's wrong with you. And they like keep him prisoner. They find out that this isn't their Jason. It's super intense. And it's like, oh, they actually kill this universe's version of his friend too, who had started seeing his wife. Oh my God. But one of the employees is like, this is wrong. Amanda, who was actually this universe's Jason, Jason's therapist. Cool setup. I really wish Dark Matter did something with it. So she helps him escape and takes Jason to the multiverse box within the compound and they escape into the multiverse together because Amanda is just willing to abandon her entire ass life. Okay. <laughs> My life is ruined. And I, I need to talk about Amanda real quick. We're not going to talk too much about the multiverse time because it's just a bunch of cool like sci-fi concepts or different near worlds. Oh, I, I forgot to even mention, they even go to a certain place where they go to like a sci-fi paradise world. And Amanda's already established at this point. She's like, I can't go back to my world. But she doesn't stay in the paradise world despite there being a limited number of injections they have left. And if she did stay here, Jason would have more opportunities to go home. But she's like, hey, we still need each other. Why? Because I'm the other version of use therapist and I feel like we need each other. That's not a re what? Well, Wendell, with all due respect, that don't make a lot of sense. Amanda, you could die at any single one of these universes you jump into. It's already established with near-death experiences, but she's like, let's roll the dice. Utopia? F that. I guess she wants to get involved with this Jason eventually murdering Jason too? But no, because after he continues to display like reckless behavior at a certain point, she does just leave his ass with half the uh, injections and goes off and does her own thing. We don't get to find out what happens to Amanda because the book does not give a shit about her. She's just along for the ride until the narrative couldn't figure out what to do with her. And I know what you're thinking, but like, oh, what? she was his therapist. There had to be like some valuable insights before she left. Not really. She just at one point points out like, you're obsessing over your wife and it's bad. And then she's gone after she tries to sleep with him. Because of course, as soon as she figured out she couldn't have Jason, well, <laughs> I better just get on out of here. By the way, one of the last things Amanda says to Jason is that stupid, not real definition of, hey, do you know what the definition of insanity is that came from a quote that's not the actual definition and every crappy sci-fi book has to shoehorn that in there somewhere now. And I'm, stop. If you're writing a book and you're like, do you know what the definition of insanity is? Have it repeat it. Take it out. Take it out right now. That s f no. They go to like alternate universes where like it looks like a super volcano erupted. There's another one where like there's a super winter. Like everyone's frozen to death and like starving. It's horrible. It's sad. Um, but Jason's acting erratically because they figure out how to get closer to their actual universe. They can't get to their one, but they get to like closer and closer ones because it's about like what you're thinking about when you go through the multiverse thing. And so eventually they're like, we can get close enough that I can see alternate versions of my wife. There's always already Jason's there or something and Jason doesn't want to go like do what was done to him to another Jason. So he always has to end up leaving, but he can't help but reach out to his wife. Why? Because I guess it worked out so well last time you reached out to an alternate version of your wife, Jason. Here begins the problem because I kid you not, they end up going to a version of our world that's suffering from a pandemic. And instead of immediately being like, oh, let's just wait by the box until we can use it again. Jason, for some reason, is like, you know what I better go do? Find my wife in a pandemic world where there's a curfew. Rightfully, Amanda's like, hey, stop. I will leave your ass. But then she just doesn't. But in the pandemic world, before Amanda leaves him, they go to his home where it's, again, this isn't your wife. 
dude, I get you miss her, but this is an infected, dying version of your wife whose version of Jason already died of the plague. And Jason goes to see her and she's of course like fevered out, like you're alive, I thought you were dead, our son's dead upstairs. And Jason, she's like late, late infected, like bleeding from the eyes infected. And Jason just like gets in her face and he's like, oh my God, I better get real close. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor, not a physicist. He ends up like injecting her with enough morphine to kill her because when someone's infected with some kind of horrible thing, you want to start injecting them with stuff without rubber gloves on. That's a that's a good plan. I know what you're thinking, but Daniel, obviously this has come back to bite him. He's going to get infected or something. Nope, not a little bit, he does not get infected. Uh, there's no lesson to be learned, and this is just a thing that happens. Why? I really thought when we got to this world, I was like, oh, Jason's gonna be written to be an idiot, and at the end, he's gonna start getting people in his home universe infected with this universe's pandemic. But no, this whole thing happened and that's all I have to say about that. After the pandemic world, she is like, oh, that was your worst fear. That's why we found that world, which leads to like, which leads, which partially leads to like their uh, figuring out of how to actually get back to the right universe. So after Amanda leaves Jason, he stays in a couple universes and then he does manage to go back to the right universe because he takes one of his last vials of the drug that allows him to travel and he's able to get back to his world purely because now he super duper wants it. So eventually Jason gets back to his actual universe and he's like, I gotta take out Jason too. And he starts doing like recon on it. But this is where the book decides like, hey, you know how we were like really focused on this Jason versus Jason two and they're polar opposites of each other. And that focus is actually pretty intense and in making up for the poor decision making skills of Jason. What if we introduce a, a plethora of Jasons, a confederacy of dunces, if you will, who are now all working to try and get Jason 2's place next to his wife. We are watching, <laughs> God damn it, an army of Jasons fighting to become the one Jason. There can only be one Jason. There can be only one. And there is even the idea put forward in the book, and it's never resolved or addressed, that he could just go back to a universe that's so close to his with a Jason 2 intruder uh, that, you know, he would just never be able to figure it out, and it's actually not his. That idea is in the book. Is it resolved? And I even want to point out the pandemic being his worst fear thing is tied into like his mother dying from sickness when he's a kid. And so it's like his worst fear is his family dying of a sickness. But right now, wouldn't his biggest fear being like going to a universe in the infinite multiverse where evil Jason like has a psychotic snap and kills his wife and kid? Like that would be my biggest fear. And then you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this universe that's so close to yours aside from this one change and your home universe because it's an infinite multiverse. Daniel, you're being nitpicky. The book brings it up. And I really think the book still wants us to like this version of Jason, especially with how Dark Matter actually ends. Now, I want to go back a little bit in the actual like longer story, because there are several key moments throughout Dark Matter that are clearly trying to have us see Jason make a good moral decision at a crucial time. Like when Amanda tries to sleep with him, he's like, no, I'm gonna stay loyal to my wife. When he's like, I could just take this Jason's life and do what was done to me. And he's like, no, I'm gonna go on. This is supposedly the prime Jason, the one who's morally the best, which I like for playing into the pillar opposite between Jason 1 and Jason 2. Like, that's a good setup. But introducing the confederacy of Jasons is such a bad call when this is what you're building towards. Because yes, we are introduced to Jasons who made worse decisions throughout the way and as a result are darker versions of himself who are actually willing to like open fire on a car with her, his wife and kid in it to try and like get there. But okay, Dark Matter is telling us this is prime Jason. He's at his moral best. He's smart, except uh, no and no. Because once he figures out there's multiple Jasons, he goes to a random hotel. He just tells a cab driver, like, take me to any hotel. That way other Jasons can't track him down. And he tries to create an email account, but it's already been created and it's his name in pig Latin. So we go, he logs in with a password that he's able to just assume because other Jasons have the same brain as him. Okay. I'll suspend my disbelief for that. Fine. And within that email, there's a hyperlink to a chat room where all of the Jasons are now talking.
why did a Jason set up a chat room? <laughs> and we see like some of the Jasons are slightly more unhinged in here and it's used to establish like there's 70 some Jasons here, but like it doesn't actually add up to the number of injections he had. So I don't, I don't know like if it's the decisions or the injections or what's causing all these clones. It's just like, okay, we're doing a chat room thing. Neat. Why? Why is this happening to me? Why? And our Jason has a couple run-ins with other Jasons, but to get to a point where he's like, okay, I need to get my wife alone, but not alert original prime evil Jason too, and not get in the way of all these other Jasons. Like I need to pull her to myself through away. And his solution to this problem is to get arrested. Actually, not a bad plan because it makes it so that he calls her from a police station line and he's able to get a hold of his wife. He's like, I need you to bail me out of jail. So she comes while Jason two is at class or something and gets him out of jail. And then he sits down and tells her everything. And she's like, what the hell? You look different. You're like skinny because he's been surviving in the multiverse. And he's like, call Jason. She calls Jason. She's like, hello. And Jason two picks up and is like, hey dear. And then she looks at the Jason prime and is like, oh, you're not telling a lion. That's amazing. And they go and get his kid and they take off. By the way, when he checks into this hotel that he like went to randomly to keep himself anonymous, he checks in under a name of someone in his family instead of just a random name from like looking around doing the Peter Griffin thing from Family Guy. He, he just is like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's use a name that another Jason would absolutely recognize. So guess what? Uh, Jason shows up and tries to kill him. <laughs> Who could have seen that coming? Right? It's like you'd have to be from the future. Jason, the dumbest man in the multiverse. So he abandons his hotel room and goes to a bar where he meets another Jason and they have a drink. Who's a scientist? <laughs> he's a scientist. So he's able to pick up wife and kid. They get in a rental car, cash out their savings and checking and like zoom off. They're like, Boom, we're gonna go and do this thing. And so Jason and his wife go to like a random location. They assume they won't be able to be found at. And Jason logs in to the chat room again and is like, we need to do a lottery to figure out which Jason gets to keep Danny and the kid. Because these are all clones of him now. They're not even like evil Jason. They are him. That's the conflict. And I, I was like, okay, maybe stop using the chat room, but maybe this book can pull off this ending. It cannot because already the focus of having like one pillar Jason versus another pillar Jason and the moral conflict between the two is just destroyed in the narrative for me personally. And all these other Jasons running around, it's, it's just so weird and mishandled and I, ugh. But we start seeing proof that like, okay, the other Jasons are maybe a little more unhinged because they had to make like darker choices. And so this is the real Jason, except Danny at one point is even like, how do I know you're actually like the version of my husband? And his, his answer to this is to look her in her eyes and be like, you can't tell, dude, these other Jasons are not evil Jason too. They are you sans like five days sometimes. You can't just be like, yeah, but it's super duper me. Is this addressed? New. Nope. Aside from, and I, I kid you not, Danny's like, how do I figure out you're the one? Well, you were willing to get arrested to get my attention. And because of how extreme our life decisions are, that means you must be the right one because fate. Science. Fast forwarding back to the next day after he goes in the chat room, he's like, we're all going to meet up as Jason's and pull a lottery to figure out which one gets to keep my wife. He tells his wife and his wife is like, no, you don't get to lotter me off. Are you crazy? And Jason's like, I'm gonna. And that's the end of it. <laughs> that's the end of that conflict. His wife's whole like objection is just swept under the rug and he doesn't get to argue with her because I, I guess the fate thing was BS or something. It's just such a dismissive thing. Like, dude, no, your wife and child don't get to get lottery to a, another Jason possibly. And he's even like, this is the last time I'm gonna see him because it's not gonna be who wins most likely. What are you doing? If you believe you're prime Jason, you don't just throw your hat in a lottery and go, Mah. But apparently his teenage son, because he's just as stupid as his father, turned on his phone's like find my ability during the night. And so all the Jasons uh, start arriving despite, I don't know 
how they had access to the Find My thing when only like Jason 2 should have, but Jason 2 and other Jasons show up because I guess Jason 2 is being tailed by other Jasons. And there's this big, ugly standoff uh, and like Jason's dying. <laughs> and one of the Jason you got to drink with the bar earlier shows up and like gunshots, blah. But finally, it's, it's Jason 2 and original Jason in a standoff. And Jason 2 gets killed because it's Charlie, Charles, whatever and son's name is, tries to leap at Jason 2, which provides a distraction for Jason to just kill Jason 2. Okay, but now there's a bunch of other Jasons who are shown to be very reckless running around this world, so the problem still exists. And now it's time for the cop-out. Are you ready? Ready. Thematically, to me, this is a personal preference thing, which, you know, nitpicking this kind of decision-making stuff from a character, I'm willing to admit, it's not gonna bother a lot of people. There's a lot of people who are just presented solutions to problems on surface level in the text, and they're willing to just buy into it and follow the narrative for enjoyment. I am jealous of those people, I cannot. I like to think deeper and go, is there a better solution here? Does this serve the theme? Does this serve like lessons the character's learning? Dark matter, middle finger to all of that. And now Jason, uh, like Jason 2's last words to Jason 1 are like, there's something in the glove box. And then he dies. And what Jason and his family, after leaving the cabin they're hiding in under a hail of gunfire from other Jason's finds, is dosages to be able to use the thing to jump to another universe. Because if there's all these Jasons hunting them here, the only way they'll be able to escape is to just get out. And so like Amanda before them, they just are like, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> let's dip. Other solutions to the problem beyond um, <laughs> leaving your universe life and other loved ones behind. Hey, you know how you went to the police once before? You now have a bunch of dead Jasons. Call the police. <laughs> Call the police. Get them to come here and go, hey, this is going to sound insane. These are clones of me. There's a bunch of them. Search the area. Here's a bunch of places I know I would go, which is something that's repeated throughout the entire book repeatedly. Find more of them. Arrest them. I'm the original. Protect me and my family. The police are likely going to lock you up. For sure. There's going to be like weird things going on, but your son and wife get to keep their lives and likely you're not going to be kept forever. In my personal opinion, better than jumping back into the multiverse, which any door you open has the potential to kill you my personal preference, but that's the ending of the book. They go to the original site that Jason was taken to by Jason 2 when he was kidnapped and, and sent off, and they go to the box, and there's a bunch of Jasons waiting there for him, and because his wife pulls out a gun and is like, this is my Jason, because fate, I'm going to take him into the multiverse, and we're going to find another world, because that worked out so well last time, and they nailed it. <laughs> so they go into the multiverse with all the other Jasons left behind. End of story. Let's get back to that theme idea. The big thing repeated throughout this book is don't be like professional Jason. Be like the one who chose his family. But at the ending of the book, the solution to their problem is to use the invention by Jason 2, evil Jason, and to jump into another universe, learning no lessons, I guess, because let's use evil technology to solve our problems. I'm sorry. What? What are you doing, Dark Matter? I want to say again, this book is well-written. This book has interesting concepts. Shallow, annoying characters, in my opinion, especially in Jason and Amanda, who's just a bored, and his wife, whose complaints and thoughts are valid, are just dismissed. But, like, the ending message, what are you trying to say? You are being like, this is the prime Jason. This is the, this is the best guy. He can't think of a real solution because I, the author, cannot think of a real solution. So multiverse, cop out. <laughs> Let's not resolve the conflict. You could end up in a nuclear hellscape with a pandemic and a frozen tundra this time. But, you know, <laughs> you probably won't have a bad thought. So <laughs> Let's risk it for the biscuit. Jason Dessen is the dumbest multiverse traveler I have ever come across. Not in a fits way. <laughs> in a you deserve <laughs> so many of the bad things that happened to you. Also, did none of the other Jasons that went to the pandemic world get infected and bring it back? Like, I want to know in three months, is there going to be a pandemic issue in the original universe we start this in? Because a whole lot of Jasons are running around that got exposed to, like, pandemic blood and... Did none of them get infected, despite this all being about, like, choices and consequences and new paths? <sighs> I didn't like Dark Matter. I It's well-written. 
It's got an interesting concept. I, I do think if this was an episode of the Twilight Zone and didn't decide to balloon out its conflict to provide hundreds of Jasons, it could have been great. Uh, but in terms of jumping the shark, I will say Dark Matter did manage to do a cool flip before it landed. <laughs> I really am glad so many people like this book. It's not good out of 10 for me. Absolutely not my cup of tea. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this little bit of a rant review. I'm sure I got some little details wrong here. I, I'm sure, let me go through my notes. Oh yeah, one last point I wanted to say. I think if this book got even weirder than it was, Dark Matter could have worked. If this leaned in to the odd, granted I'm someone who likes weird, it actually, I think, with even the storyline we have, could have panned out. But it tried so hard to stay grounded, there ended up being this tonal clash for me with some really weird things that then undercut the high stakes of it trying to stay grounded. And I think if the tone had been adjusted like three notches, I wouldn't be asking these questions. I know I've brought it up a lot here recently, but like there's tons of things you can point out like that in Twin Peaks where it's like, why didn't this or why didn't that? But the story is aware of it and it's tonally answering those questions by being more of like expressionist with how it's trying to tell a story. It's about how it makes you feel. Dark Matter is not about how it makes you feel. It's about the direct narrative and implications, ideas. And it, it just, it fumbles, it lands flat on its face in that way for my, in my opinion. This has just been my review of Dark Matter. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Uh, if you find yourself in an alternate universe suffering from a horrendous pandemic, don't go visit your loved ones that are not even really your loved ones after that has been firmly established for you. Stay indoors and go to another universe. Ah, uh, have a good one, y'all. Peace.